the weekend's Premier League football was the last we'll see until after the World Cup, which begins next Sunday. The players have a month break and uh, the Premier League players will be back on Stevens's Day, which is Boxing Day in England. Unlike the French, for example, who are giving their players three weeks rest when they come back. And so Arsenal are going to be top of the league at Christmas, but they'll have played a lot fewer games than clubs normally have. But it's a very good sign for Arsenal. And over the weekend, an interview that Cristiano Ronaldo has given to Piers Morgan, a 90-minute television interview. There have been clips and leaks about the interview, and it's very tough stuff. So I'm joined now by Liam Brady and John Giles to discuss this. Liam, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, one of the greatest players in the history of the game, Manchester United player for a long time, it's where he started, really, in England. And in this interview, he is merciless about Ralph Ranwick, the previous coach, and Ten Hag, the present coach, also about the fact that since Alex Ferguson left, there's been no upgrade in the gym or in the equipment in any way. But it, it is being seen by the other players as a massive betrayal. What's your impression on what you've heard so far, Liam? Well, he's always been a difficult character, I mean, He's always been... Uh, very much into his own ego, hasn't he? You know, and yeah. probably that's made him the player he's been. Yes. Uh, he hasn't had things his own way at United since coming back. He, 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 he's kind of in denial about, uh, how he can play football anymore. He wants, he wants to coach. He wants the team to suit the way he plays. Yes. Uh, and simply doesn't work like that, you know? Yeah. So, I think the interview was was wrong, but I'm not surprised really because he's that type type of character. Uh, when I saw that he wasn't on the uh, uh, he wasn't even on the bench yesterday against Fulham, uh, I knew there was something you know something really up. Uh, I think Ten Hag came out and said Martial is the best striker at the club, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. So yes. uh, there's there's a kind of a war on there, Eamon. And uh, yes. Uh, and really, football clubs don't want their dirty washing uh, wa- washed in public. But yes. Ronaldo, uh, he's a law unto himself, and uh, and uh, I'm not surprised, really. No. Uh, John, you were a former Manchester United player. You know that club. It's very rare that they break ranks. One thing that should be said is that he said of Ralph Ranwick, who was there last year, that he wasn't even a coach. He said he was a football administrator. And in fact, before Ramwick went to Manchester United, he had been a director of football. He hadn't actually coached a team for several years. But the fact of the matter is, last season, Ronaldo still was Manchester United's leading goalscorer with over 20 goals. What do you make of this, John, at the moment? Well, I don't think it's right, Eamon. I'd agree with uh, Liam on the situation. Um, you know, I didn't hear all the interview, I didn't No, nobody it, has seen it yet because it hasn't been screened yet. But okay. been, been, right. it's been leaked and clips of the interview are leaked in which Ronaldo, I have it in front of me here, says, I feel betrayed, not only this year, but last year too. And he, the other, his other core complaint is that since Alex Ferguson left the job, they haven't upgraded the gym, the equipment isn't there. He said Ramwick wasn't a coach at all. He, he does seem to have, in my view, genuine complaints, but the relationship with Ten Hag, the present coach, clearly has completely broken down. And he's really turning on the club in a big way with this Piers Morgan, who, as we know, has a way of getting these exclusive interviews. He says he's a friend yeah. of Ronaldo's. Well, I, I, I don't agree with a lot of the things that you told me that he said. Yes. Because he's blaming everything on the club, they're disrespecting him and everything else. Well, you have to go back to the start of the season. He didn't come back until late. Yes. He wanted to transfer. Yes. He's gone on about the club. It's not like it was in Ferguson's case. Well, times have moved on in most clubs. You're talking about the conditions. It didn't stop Fergie from winning loads and loads of trophies when he had the, just those dressing rooms. I, mean, yes. I, I think it's a sour situation from Ronaldo. 
I think he's yeah. out of the out of the club now. And I I I I wouldn't agree with doing the interview and I certainly don't agree with a lot of the uh statements that you've just you told me that he's made. You know, yeah, he's, and he's finished a, now at the club. There's something that we said last week, I think John you and Liam and I all agreed. Ten Hag wanted to put him on as a sub. I uh, didn't want to be on as a sub. I, he walked into the dressing room and left the ground before the end of a game. He did that, or mm. a variation of that, twice. In that situation, the coach has to do what Ten Hag did. You cannot allow any player, however high yeah. profile he is, to, to get away with that. Well, I think the manager was right in what he said. I think some of the things that he's done since he's gone there is, as we know him, and definitely that we all know, he's been a great player over the years. Uh, but to what he's done for Manchester United this season, last season, coming back late from, from for training at the start of the season, looking for a transfer, I mean, th- that's not the way to behave. And then come on the, te- on the, the radio or television, whatever he was on now, and start criticising the club for this, that and the other. He's to blame for some of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, right. there's no doubt about that. And I think it'd be, and in the situation that he's in and the player that he's been and the personality that he's been, I think he'd, he'd be better off not doing that type of interview. Yeah. Uh, Liam, just a final question before we move on to the weekend's games. It appears that quite a lot of Manchester United supporters resent this interview uh, and blame it on his ego. I, I, I think in a situation like this, there's two sides to every story. The Ralph Randwick thing sounds true, and Ten Hag obviously isn't that he, he says Ten Hag doesn't respect him, and therefore he doesn't respect Ten Hag. But Ten Hag is the coach now, and he has to be the coach and make the calls. Yeah, I mean, and Ten Hag wants to you hear him. You know, anytime he's interviewed, he's on about having a pressing game. He wants his, yes. his forwards to close people down quickly, not let defenses out, make them make mistakes. Ronaldo just doesn't do that anymore. If you want to play with Christian Ronaldo, you sit back and he hit teams on the break and that's where he's been brilliant at for the last few years you know since he's kind of lost that yard of pace yes Um, like at Juventus he had to go there as well Eamon because he was his ego was causing problems you know yeah, he is that kind of guy isn't he yes you know and I kind of half fancy Portugal for the World Cup with all the very very good players they've got yes but with him in the mix I don't know whether he's going to be a help or a hindrance? I really don't. But in this situation, he's wrong. You shouldn't go public. And as for doing it with Piers Morgan, well, you know, there's two things I regret in my career. One, that I never played uh, in a major championships for Ireland. And the other one is that Piers Morgan is an Arsenal support. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it, it's all it's all wrong to say, and it stinks, quite, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah, and I think uh, we'll see a lot more of it, but it is not the way for a great player to end his association with Manchester United, and that's certainly come to an end. Uh, Liam, just let me ask you about Arsenal. They won at Wolves on Saturday night. I watched the match. They didn't play great, but they were effective. Odegaard got the two goals. He's a new player. They're top of the league by five points now as a result of Manchester City's loss at home to Brentford. So, Mikel Arteta will be pleased and deserves the credit for getting this team to be very positive, even away from home. No, we've been positive about them the last couple of months, Eamon. They've improved and they got better and better. Yeah. They've also beaten the big teams like Chelsea and Spurs, who are up around the top of the Premiership. Uh, And, you know, I thought Wolves was a good performance, particularly in the second half, first half. They took their time about getting going, but second half, they really, you know, run the show. Party again was very good at midfield. Uh, scored two good goals. Jesus was again, without scoring, was an inspiration to the team. You know, his work rate is infectious. Uh, I think people follow him behind them and they got two really good goals, good move. Uh, Audregard finished the second one particularly well. Uh, everybody's doing their job, Eamon. And, uh, you know, with Manchester City's result on, 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 uh, on Saturday, uh, at the lunchtime kickoff, I think it's given Arsenal supporters, ooh, 
Well, could it be? Could it be that we could do it this year? You know, because yes. Manchester City have a slip up in them. And this is the best start by any team for, you know, many, many years. You yes, know? it is. Even yeah. under Arsene Wenger, they didn't amass this amount of points after 14 games. No, 37 points, uh, five points clear of Manchester City, who've played the same amount of games, and seven points clear of Newcastle, who were third, played a game more. And indeed, Tottenham Hotspur have played a game more. They've played 15 games, and both of them are a long way behind Arsenal. John, the Manchester City game, you watched and uh, I watched, and you've been saying for weeks, John, that the City setup isn't right. They don't look to have the right mix in midfield, and the results are bearing you out, particularly the goals they're conceding. They've conceded nine goals at home, which is an awful lot for them. You know, for, for example, Newcastle have conceded five at home, Manchester United have only conceded four at home. So, what's gone wrong there? Do you think, John? Well, I mean, as you say, there's a there's a there's a loss in them. I mean, you know, losing a yeah. match in them. I mean, most of the other matches they're winning. But what I see of them, it's when they're attacking, it, it, it's everybody attacking. Yeah. You know, like the goal they lost against Liverpool, for example, right there. You know, this, the other day when they lost the the, the winning goal, I mean, yeah, there was. 11 or 10 players sort of ahead of the ball near enough. You know, yeah. it was just one kick out and there's three there's three players going at them, you know, yeah. from Brentford. Yeah. And uh, that, that's been happening all the time. Like as if there's, like you see the right back, he's up in the inside left position sometimes. And I know that's the way Manchester City play. But I think you're going to be found out now and again doing that. And they're, getting, they're being found out far too often for their own good. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a good performance, and I've seen a few like that, and they've been winning matches sometimes. But you couldn't say, well, that was really, really good performance, as if there's no emphasis whatsoever on defending, and they have the ball, aiming like somebody sitting yes. back and, and and holding holding it up. There's nobody doing that, and I thought it was they, they, they didn't deserve to win the match at all. Brentford deserved to win it in the long run, so I think it's a worry generally for City. I mean, they've got terrific players, as we know. But you, you can't go, 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 go forward all the, all the time. And there has to be a balance to it. And I don't see that balance there. And Brentford did extremely well. Yeah. Just, just to mention Arsenal, I, mean, I think Marshall, Arsenal now are getting better and better. They look more like a, cha- a championship winning team than, than I've seen for the, the, the previous part of the season. They're looking really good. He's done a really good job. But City, very, very bad result, Damon, and a very, very bad performance. Yeah, uh, uh, Liam... Brentford's winning goal was in the 90th minute, but the pace, determination, the length of the field they had to go, and the absolute belief was incredible. I, I, I never saw anything like it. Most teams at that stage in the game at, at, at the Etihad would be hanging on, but boy, did they believe in themselves, and their coach, Thomas Frank, deserves great credit for what he's done there. Brentford really is, is not a big club, historically, but these are real, tough, strong, quick young players. Yeah, the recruitment has been great, Eamon. You know, yeah. they, I think they go into every detail about recruitment. I think the guy is a bit of a genius who, who owns Brentford. He goes into all statistics and things like that, and they come up with these players. Like Tony was playing down the leagues, the lad who got the... Yeah, I've, I've been Tony, in yeah. The England squad, yeah. Uh, he, he very nearly got in the England squad. But they're a big, strong, physical team. I think they went uh, route one with City, uh, and I've often thought that City might be vulnerable to that. Whereas if you play, try and play out against City the way they press, they'll take the ball off you and they'll punish you. But yeah. Brentford just ruled that, ruled that tactic out and 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 went long. Uh, and as John says. Uh, you know, they pushed everybody forward for that corner kick in the end without any thought, oh, we might give one away. Yeah. And Brentford took advantage of it on the break. You know, it was a really, really good performance. Yeah. But, you know, you're saying about Man City, I was reading today that this is their best start for ever, I think. This is their best start, City, and and, and, and also Tottenham's best start. Um, uh, so I think the, the fact that Arsenal have done so well has kind of, made people forget about that actually City, as John says, have won a lot of games and scores once again on Saturday came back from being 
it all down to, to win the match. And their start has been very impressive as well, but Arsenal's start has kind of put them in the shadows a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Another surprise, John, Newcastle are third in the table and they beat Chelsea and they deserve to beat Chelsea, John. Uh, Chelsea were very, very poor. Now, they are missing major players. Rhys James, the right back, Ben Chilwell, the left back, both potential England players, neither of them able to go to the World Cup because they've got hamstring strains. But that team has also lost Kante uh, with a bad hamstring tear. He can't go to the World Cup either. So these are really big players they're missing. But they, they don't seem to be clicking at all. And Newcastle, I thought, were well worth their win. Yeah, Newcastle played well again, Eamon. Yeah, I, I, think, no, I think he's got a big job, Potter, at Chelsea, Eamon. Yeah. You know, he's got a lot of stars, but he, at the moment, but he hasn't got a team. Yes. No, no, it, it does take a while for, for new managers to come in and, and get, get it the way they want to get it, but uh, it doesn't look right for Chelsea, you know. Sterling is not kicking a ball. There's, no. There's, there's a lot of stars, but they're not, doing the, not really doing their stuff, so he's got to get a grip of it. And it, it's going. I think it's going to be a big job for him. Um, yes, yeah, so you know, right. the players that he got in, he's, 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 he hasn't brought them in. Uh, it, it's his. It's his early days. To be fair, you know, to, to get it the way you want to get it. And as you say, there's a lot of injuries there. But they should be doing better than they're doing in their performance. Him, but Newcastle, I really do have a team. Eddie Howe's done a great job. Yes, I think yeah. he's, he's, he's made a team of, of players. Yes. He hasn't spent an awful lot of money. Uh, he spent well. But they're a good team, good attitude, and uh, Chelsea are a long way short of that. Yeah, Liam, uh, this new owner who came into Chelsea, with acknowledging the fact that he has three top-class players injured, that's Kante, Rhys James and Ben Chilwell. I note that Mason Mount, who is, I think, a very good player, I think uh, he's in the England squad, obviously, and probably, and will start for England, I, I would suspect. He's in uh, contract negotiations now, and it's not going well. This new owner appears to have opinions about the game, and I think if they're f having trouble with Mason Mount over his contract, uh, which is a year and a half to run, that's not a good sign either. And where's Graham Potter in all of that? Does he have a say? Well, I'm sure he does. I mean, I'm sure he's, you know, the the, the owner's going to go to Potter and seek his uh, his uh, his opinion about, you know, how much money should be spent on new players and and, and new contracts also. Uh, but I agree with John. You know, like he's inherited a bad situation. Like Sterling's come in, um, and uh, he hasn't kicked the ball since he's arrived at Chelsea. Really, no, he hasn't. Um, the other signing, of course, is Aubameyang, which is a bit like a Ronaldo business. I, I think one of the best things Arteta did for the dressing room at Arsenal was to get rid of Aubameyang. You yes. Know? yes. And he left himself short, and a lot of people said, oh, that might have cost him the Champions League last year, the fact that he didn't have a striker. But I think getting rid of someone like Aubameyang is a disruptive force. Yes. He doesn't, has no discipline. He thinks he's, you know... Uh, a special case, and he doesn't have to adhere to 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 the discipline of the of the dressing room. Uh, I think Arteta getting rid of him made a big statement and uh, and actually improved things immensely at Arsenal. Uh, and I think Potter has got to sort all those things out. Now, who got uh, Bamiyang in? Was it Bolly? Was it Tuchel? Was it the pair of them together? I don't know, but. You see him sitting on the bench there, and he's not even brought on against Newcastle. That's yeah. a real problem for Potter to sort out, you know? Yes. But also, uh, I would agree with you that he's missing some very important players, especially Reese James and Chilwell, yes. who are two tremendous fullbacks. Yes. And, of course, Kante, who's going to miss the World Cup for France, and is, I think we all agree, an amazing player and one of the best midfield players in the world. Uh, just to go to the other end of the table, John, Frank Lampard is someone I've always had a lot of respect for when he was playing and even when he, when he was coaching. And his Everton team now are looking really deep in trouble. A 3-0 defeat away to Bournemouth and the fans 
invading the pitch, actually, the Everton fans screaming for him to go. He's gone to a tough situation there, hasn't he? Because Everton have ideas about themselves as a club. They have been one of the great English clubs, haven't they, in the past? But um, he looks like he's in trouble, John. Well, the fans have turned on him, Eamon, uh, yeah. you know, in two matches now. Yeah. Uh, and a really bad defeat at the weekend, you know, born with our, are not one of the top teams, a very good side, not one of the top teams. And uh, the fans have really turned on him. And if the fans turn on you, I mean, you're in big trouble. Um, you know, he's, 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 I don't think he's had the resources there. No. I think they've been in big trouble over the years with bad buyers and, and he's, he's walked into that. So he's a very, very difficult job. And, uh, you know, the way it's gone, you know, if he doesn't pick up, he, he, he could be out of there very, very quickly, uh, which, you know, I'd be like you. I think he did a really good job at Chelsea in that, in Derby. Uh, and I think he's walked into a, a really, really bad situation there. Yeah, Liam, that's, it's a tough situation when you're in a big club or a club that thinks of itself as a big club and you've no money, the money's all spent. It's very, very hard when when the fans turn against you so quickly. I mean, he's only been there since a few weeks. Well, I think Everton fans have been really frustrated. I mean, the best part of 10 years, I think. You yes, know, yeah. One under Bill Ken Wright, I think he got things dreadfully wrong there. Uh, it's, it's since Moyes left, really, that Everton haven't been the team that used to be, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, and we're going back a long, long time now, one. David Moyes left to go to Manchester United, but uh, they ha they've had a succession of managers. Managers are actually doing well at other clubs, you know. Yes, a lot at Fulham. Uh, is it Silva? He's he, yeah. he, he he was sacked with Everton. Carlo he's, he's Ancelotti, I think, was Ancelotti there. Yeah, Ancelotti was there. Yeah. I think that was a kind of a you know, Ancelotti was was the biggest name they could get. They wanted to make a statement. They've got plenty of money. They've got. Yeah. Usman off behind the name and who was a major shareholder at Arsenal and he's into the energy business and <laughs> that's the place to be. That's the place <laughs> to be at the moment. You they know, have, they had they Rafa, Rafa Benitez. Benitez. They've had, yeah, they've had they've had a succession of managers, you know. Yeah. Frank does look as if he's in trouble, you know. But uh, I don't know. It's I think it's behind the scenes at that club that they've got to sort out at yeah. executive level. And and the the recruitment of players that's got to be sorted out. They've wasted so much money. Like Busmanov must have spent a half a billion pounds since he's been there. Yes, and there's nothing to show for it on the field. No, John. Let's talk about Manchester United's uh, team now and their performance against Fulham yesterday. Two one win. Fulham uh, didn't have Mitrovic, which I think is a big blow to them. But they're a very very good manager who I think we, we both uh, admire, and it was a good game. Oh, well, a very good game, Eamon. You know, the, 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 the Fulham have been going well, as we know. So, man, uh, United did really well to, to get back into the game. I think they lost the goal early on, and, and then did, did extremely well. And the young lad that scored the goal, Eamon. Yeah, Ganacho. Ganacho, apparently, <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask both of you, after the match, I think one of the... I think it was Rio Ferdinand said, this kid has great potential, and apparently, he, he, but he's a bit of a lad. And I, I think Ferdinand or someone else said, all the great players were bits of a lad. Uh, not, not, not you and Liam, I'm, I'm sure. But this kid apparently is a very good player, but he was, yeah. he was thrown out of the first team squad for not turning up or training on time. He's got a little bit of history in that way. Took his goal really, really well. And I saw him play last week, and he was very, very good at Old Trafford. Oh, very good, Eamon. I mean, the, the, yeah. the goal he scored, I've seen him. But he's, has, he's only just come into the team. Uh, and he's but, only 18. Uh, yeah, he looks, he looks a real a future star, Eamon. You know, yeah. like the, the, he gets on the ball, he can beat players. He's very quick. I mean, his goal yesterday was fantastic. Yeah. But, and that's the second time, only the second time I've seen him. And... Really, really top notch. Now, whether he's going to be keep, keep, behave himself or not remains to be seen. Who said it, Fernand? Fern, uh, Fern, I, I think it was Fern. I think it was Gary Neville. Oh, was sorry, Gary yeah, Neville, I got yeah, it wrong. It was Gary Neville, was Gary yeah, Neville it's who right. said it. It's okay, you get a lot of things wrong. You do. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was Gary Neville, and he he, he did say, yeah, yeah, a lot of the special players have 
of some, but he's only a kid. He's got to learn, you know. He's got to learn yeah. to get his yeah. training on yeah, time. Well, I don't, I don't, and, and, sorry, John. Go ahead. I would. I don't. Do, I don't agree with Gary Neville. Well, I don't agree with him on the other things, but I don't agree with him on that. They, they, I mean, of all the star players I knew, really star players, I mean, yes. uh, and Finley behaved themselves. Of course, they're the, the odd ones who are very talented. Yeah. But it, it, there'll be more talented lads who behave themselves yes. than lads who don't behave themselves. I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, but then you don't like Gary Neville. You don't like Red Nev. Is his well, I don't, I don't know him, man. But I, I'm not, <laughs> no, I, no. Be, I, I don't know him, but I'm not a fan of his. No. I mean, this thing about going to the World Cup and working over yeah, there and all yeah, that rubbish. Yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that at all. And then he's, 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 he's making comments about other people doing certain things. Yes. But in that situation there with this kid coming into it, okay, he might be, he might be a bit a bit starstruck or he mightn't behave himself as well but the majority of players that I knew over the years if you talk about Dennis Law uh, Bobby Charlton all these great players George yes. Best unfortunately was, was, was an exception to that with those course, players at yes. Trafford and other places behaved themselves very very well Eamon Dumpy John what about Eamon Dumpy <laughs> Eamon, Eamon, was, Eamon was a star in the making <laughs> <laughs> well I'm still I'm still working on it but I didn't. I said it didn't have that back that that bad boy uh, tag around my neck. I just want to ask you a final question, both of you lads. The fact that we're having to close the league down, the Champions League, all the great leagues in Europe and South America are having to shut down for four weeks uh, in the middle of November. It's really, really shocking. I don't want to go into the politics of. Qatar at the moment, but it's four weeks in the middle of the season. City, for well, example, another program, Eamon. Eamon, that's another. It program, is. It, it is. Well, we're yeah, going yeah. to do it. But, but it's all. It's all wrong. Everybody thinks it's all wrong. But yes. It's all down to corruption and money yes. and so forth. And uh, we all know that. But it is what it is, and uh, everybody's accepted it. So uh, you know, the World Cup's going to kick off, and. Uh, in a week's time, just yep. over a week. No, less than a week's time, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But it's uh, so far, it's been a PR disaster uh -huh, for FIFA yeah. uh, and for Qatar. Yeah. Can I, what I was going to ask you, Liam, was wasn't about politics of it at the moment. As you say, that's another program. What effect will it have on players who have to come back and play on Boxing Day, Stevens's Day? I think they'll be very, very tired, especially yeah. the ones that go deep into the competition. You yes. know, yeah. if they go get eliminated in, let's say, the last sixteen, or they'll be all right. They won't have a problem. Yeah, they'll get a good rest. But it's the ones that go deep into the competition, yes. and we don't know who that who are they going to be. You know, yeah. I'm hoping Brazil go out early. We've got three in the Brazilian team, and I'm hoping England go out early yeah. <laughs> for selfish reasons. You yes. know, yeah, but yeah. That's that's going to be that. That's going to be the case. Whoever goes deep into the tournament, like semi final or final, are going to come back very, very tired. Yeah, John. Just uh, on that point, Manchester City have sixteen players. John going to the World Cup yeah. in Qatar, and I mean, I think I agree with Liam. I think it makes in sporting terms, in footballing terms, it's a, it's really it could it has the potential to destroy the season. But it's a very strange situation, isn't it? That's dreadful. Liam. Should yeah. that would have happened? I mean, yeah. as Liam said, we, you you say it's yeah. total corruption. Yeah, that's caused it to come into. It's just madness. Yeah. Having a World Cup in the middle of a season. Yeah. And as you say, with, there, with the players, I mean, it's the best players that are going to suffer. Because the best players are usually in the best team, it's a national team. So yes. they, they, they're likely to go the longest way in the competition. Yeah. It's madness, I mean, Madness and, and corruption. I'm, I'm, it, 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 I, just, I just can't make it out, you know? Well, we, so stupid. We've seen enough of it over our lifetimes, lads, corruption in football. But this is way out there with the worst of them and football is bound to suffer. I'm very grateful to John Giles and to Liam Brady, two great players who weren't in any way flawed character-wise. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll talk uh, again later in the week about the World Cup. Thanks to John and Liam. 